What is going on guys, Alex here, and this is the Sony X3000. This is probably the best action camera I've ever used. So before we start, I just wanna say this video is actually gonna be mainly focused about the video side of this camera, just because I know more about video than I do photography. Um, and this is actually an action camera, which I would basically only ever use for video. So that's what we're gonna be talking about. If you wanna see something on photos, time lapses, whatever, I'm sure someone else on YouTube has done it. So go and take a look at their videos instead. So as we do with all my reviews, let's actually start off with the design. Now for this camera, I feel that the design is a little bit unusual, but it kind of fits the perspective of what they were trying to do with the camera, I guess. The front of the camera does look pretty damn cool with the like widened out area for the lens. And I guess that's just because it does go really wide angle if you want it to. I just don't really like the fact that it's so long as a camera. I feel like they could have made it smaller, more like a GoPro form factor. But I guess the power inside of this thing does actually justify the size of the camera. On the front of the camera, there's a stereo microphone as well as an LED and what looks to be a speaker. Um, obviously, if if it's in the waterproof case, you're not really going to use the microphone at all because you're never going to really get all that good sound underneath water. And then of course you have the lens, which is actually just a little bit wider than the body you can see. It just kind of sticks out of the side, which is a little bit of a pain. I wish they could have just made it all one size. That would be so much better. Moving on to the right hand side or the left hand. Moving on to one of the sides of the camera, we have the little LCD screen, which I wish was backlit. It would be so good if it was, as well as some navigation buttons, a menu button you know, the branding and the NFC tag. So you could technically just NFC this thing together and then it would open something on your phone. But unfortunately this is an iPhone, so of course it doesn't do that because Apple hates you. On the back here we have a little door which you can open which then has a microphone input so you could use something like this microphone which I'm using here, the Rode Video Mic Go. You then have the micro USB to charge it, thank god it's micro USB. I hate GoPros where you have to be searching around for that USB type B cable um, and you got to make sure that it's got the right end on it because there's actually five types of USB and they actually use the most inconvenient one. I'm pretty sure everyone has a micro USB somewhere in their house so if you do lose the original one that it comes with then I guess it's not going to be that bad. We also have a micro HDMI which is pretty standard, I probably won't use it myself just because there's the Wi-Fi functionality. Um, if I ever wanted to use the micro HDMI, then I would, but I doubt that I ever would. Along this door, you'll also see there's a little waterproof seal just going around it, and it's like this with every single door. I'm not sure if the inside camera itself is actually rated to be waterproof, but I guess they put this little waterproof seal on it just in case the outer case does leak. You're probably still going to have your SD card. You're probably still going to get all the footage that you shot off, even if the camera's broken. On the other side, then we have the Sony branding and the 4K logo, and on the back there, you can flip open a little switch, which will then let you access the battery door, where you can take out this massive battery. Like, the size of the camera versus the battery is ridiculous, and I actually have a couple of these batteries because if you guys remember the camera which I started this channel with was the WX350. It ran off the same batteries which I think is pretty cool so I have a couple of those. The one thing that I don't particularly like is that it's kind of held on with these little strings and they're really flimsy. I feel like they'll probably break off eventually so uh, that's something you've got to watch out for. Make sure that you don't take the battery out all that often. And just sliding that battery back in you then lock it from the back where there's another LED. Just below that you have one of those loops so you can put a wrist strap on it. I would never do this just because you are at such risk of scratching the lens. If you do let it drop down you could scratch it on anything. Now along the bottom of the camera we have two little things. First, The first one that's really damn awesome is a tripod mount on the raw camera itself so somewhere where's my gorilla pod so you can literally just grab the gorilla pod chuck this camera on there and then be ready to go straight away or you could grab any other tripod just chuck the camera on there and you'd be ready to go i think that's a really cool thing to do i wish gopro did something similar i'm not sure if they did with the hero 5 but it's pretty damn cool to have it on this as well as having it on the outside case as well then opening up the bottom door, we then have the micro SD card slot. And speaking of the SD cards that this thing has to take, if you want to shoot in 4K or any other resolution, I usually use this tiny little Lexar card. You can't actually see it because it's a manual focus lens. Um, yeah, it's a 32 gig, 300 times speed one. Or I use a SanDisk Ultra 64 gig card, which is what I'm actually using in this. Um, but neither of those work to record 4K or 720p at 240 frames a second on this camera. So I had to go and search through all the drawers of SD cards that I have to find this little 32 gig Samsung Extreme. So I figured out that basically you need extreme rated cards, which are like 90 to 100 megabytes a second type thing. The minimum bitrate that this camera can record is 60 megabytes a second. So if you are going Going to be using this make sure that you get the right SD cards because there's nothing worse than being ready to go out somewhere with your camera and then it's saying SD card not supported and moving on to the waterproof case once again we see this method of like holding a door on I feel like it won't last very long but of course I haven't had enough chance to actually test this for a long amount of time but the method of which the door goes on is pretty simple hopefully it doesn't leak it doesn't look like the most watertight thing that you'd ever expect to see but as I said before there are waterproof seals on the inside camera as well now as I mentioned earlier there's also the tripod mat on the bottom of the case so once again, you could just whack it on a gorilla pod and then take it underwater. You could whack it on basically anything and take it underwater. 
I have some accessories here that we're going to be unboxing a bit later on. So, um, yeah, those are basically accessories that mount directly to the tripod mount as well. And on the top of the camera up here, we have the power button and the record button and an LED pass through. All of these are actually on the main camera, of course. But then we have a really cool thing over here, which is a little switch which says hold on it. So basically, once that's actually activated, you cannot press the buttons down, which I think is pretty cool because if you're in a situation where it's possible that this camera could fall off something or like get damaged in any way, if you just simply flick that down, the buttons won't stop. So you will always have your footage and it will always keep recording. Now, this case is obviously waterproof to 60 meters, which I think is pretty much enough for any. Anyone. I've never really seen any videos on YouTube of anyone going under 60 meters and I'm sure you can probably get a stronger case if you so need it but I doubt that you ever would. Now one thing I wish this camera did have is a backlit screen because this case kind of dims it all out, it like dims out the white as you can see here it's not as pure white as it was before so it's kind of difficult to see the screen especially in lower light conditions so that's something that I wish they would have done. Unfortunately it's not. If it actually is and I'm being stupid then I do apologize. Now the video quality on this camera is absolutely really goddamn sharp. I absolutely Absolutely love it and this is probably down to the fact that it has these ice glass in it you can just see that little logo there that is the top of the line Sony glass you can get for any type of camera and it really is amazing the sharpness on this thing is insane especially in the 4k at 100 megabytes a second and speaking of the bit rates and the qualities you can do I've written down a whole list on my phone here of all the different qualities that it can do here's a list of the quality that this camera can record in so first of all we got 4k at 30 frames a second 100 megabytes per second 4k at 30 frames a second 60 megabytes a second then 4K 24 at 100 meg a second, 4K 24 at 60. Then you got 1080 60 frames a second at 50 megabytes per second. Then you got 1080 30 frames a second at 50 megs a second. And 1080 24 at 50 meg a second. Then into the slow motion category, we have 720p at 240 frames a second at 100 meg a second. Then we have 720p 240 at 60 megs a second once again. So then we have 1080p 120 frames a second at 100 megabytes. And 1080p 120 frames a second at 60 megabytes. So that is a lot of things to deal with. I like the fact that they give you the 24 frames a second options um, because they are obviously cinema standard. Then you also have the really, really slow slow motion. So you have like the 1080p at 120 frames a second type thing. And all of these actually look really, really sharp. And I cannot stress how much it is. So this camera, you have a couple of color profiles. You have the normal color profile, or then you have flat. So basically, the normal one is just for all those people who are just out and about, and they're just thinking, I want to film this, and upload it straight to Instagram, Facebook, wherever I want to upload it. So you basically just walk out, you just press record, and then you just start recording, and that's basically it. But then the other method, which is the flat color profile, is more for those people who have time to color grade their video, or just basically have enough time to edit their videos in general properly before uploading them somewhere. Now, Sony is known for their stabilization in camera, and this has the active steady shot, something which I've known to be on cameras for absolutely ages. So basically what I'm going to do, first of all, is take the camera out of the case and then show you guys what the active steady shot really does, like right now, right here. So there's the camera out of the case. I'm going to turn it on. So the first video I'm going to do is going to be at 1080p, 30 frames a second with the active steady shot on, and I'm literally just going to be hand holding it here. And you can see my hands a little bit shaky. I've had a bit too much caffeine today, so uh, yeah, we'll just have a look right now. So this is with the active steady shot on, and I'm legit just holding this camera right in my hand. If I just turn it around and look at the camera which I shoot with, the monitor where I can see myself, and the microphone, basically everything right there is how I shoot these videos. And this is with active steady shot on, so I'm literally just holding this right now. Cut to the other shot so you can see how shaky my hand is. If I actually just shake it a little bit, as you can see right there, just shake it a little bit. None of this is coming off on camera, on the action camera, and I think that's pretty damn cool. And then this is without the steady shot active on the camera, so as you can see, it's much shakier, especially as I turn it around. There's the camera, the monitor, the microphone, back to me, and basically, yeah, you can see that it's definitely not as stable, and I'm holding it in the same way. If I do what I did last time and just add a little bit of shake, you can again see that it's obviously less stable, and possibly a little bit wider at the same time, because to active stabilize, the camera does have to crop down, which is kind of a disadvantage. Now along with this camera you actually get this little watch if you buy it with the watch. I believe you can buy it without it but I'm not really sure and the word little is kind of an understatement. It is absolutely massive like look at that thing on my wrist um, which is if I can even get it on my wrist because the method that you get it on your wrist is near to impossible for me. I don't know if I'm being special or not, but as you can see, it's absolutely massive. And the intent behind this is basically so that you have a screen with a load of buttons on the side so you can change all the camera settings off this watch and have a live feed at the same time. It's a very good concept. I will admit it's a very good concept, but it's so big that you'd be able to notice it straight off in any shot that you recorded with this camera. Say if you had it on the head mount, which I just happen to have here, um, and say if you had it on a helmet, you're on a bike or something, and you just set it to record on your wrist, you can see that it's there because it is so damn big, it's just ridiculous, and it does 
it does annoy me just a little bit how big it is because it kind of ruins a really, really cool concept. Let's move on to the Universal Clip, which I hope opens again like a bag of crisps. Oh, you know what? I swear, I can't even open a bag. I've got to be the worst channel on YouTube. I'm just trying to unbox stuff and I can't even open a goddamn bag. Okay. Universal Clip. Here we go. This one should be cool, because I'm actually not as stupid as I think. Let's get the camera on there. Hey, look at that. It's like a ridiculously... Oh, jeez, I hurt your hand. It's a ridiculously strong clip, which... Oh, that's cool. You can also put it on upside down. It is cool indeed. Okay, yeah, that's, um, that's going to be quite cool. I could, like, clip that onto my desk if I wanted to break my desk, I guess. So yeah, here's a couple of shots that I've shot with this mount. Unfortunately, I can't use the head mount. Um, but yeah, let's just go into these ones. But apart from that, that's basically this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I feel like this is one of the best action cameras I've ever used. I haven't used a GoPro Hero 5 yet, so I can't really compare it to it. I'm sure there's a video on YouTube somewhere comparing those two, um, and I recommend going to watch that before you buy this or before you buy a Hero 5. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, then leave a like rating down below. Also, subscribe and turn on your post notifications just so you can see whenever I upload my next video. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.